Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today I'm going to be unboxing and testing the Sizzix Big Shot Switch Plus, which is an electronic shape cutting and embossing machine. So, let's get started. I purchased this machine today at my local Hobby Lobby store, today being January 31st, 2022. It was $199.99 plus tax. It comes in this really pretty sorbet color. And right here, pictured on top of the box, tells you everything that's included with this unit. So you get the machine, two cutting platforms, two clear cutting pads, a 3D embossing folder, and three dies. I do want to mention that these machines are not the same as, say, a Cricut or a Silhouette type machine, where you can go into a design program create your own design, and then send it over to the machine to be cut. This machine is only meant to be used with pre-made dies and embossing folders, so let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. Right here on the top of the box are the two clear cutting pads. And here are the two platforms that the machine comes with. This is the 3D embossing folder and the three sets of dies. And this is the set of instructions which I'm actually going to take time to read. I know that we always are so anxious to get started, but I find that I avoid a lot of uh, mishaps and mistakes if I just take the time to read through my instructions first. And this is the um, power box, plus the electrical cord. And here's the machine. It looks like it's uh, nicely protected. And then I'm going to lift the machine out. The machine is very well protected inside the box. It does have these egg crate type inserts on both the top and the bottom of the machine to protect it for shipping. I already took off a couple of layers of protection and now there's this one protective film on the top that I'll just take off now. This machine is very heavy. It's definitely not a portable machine. You're going to want to find a spot for it and keep it in that spot. I did go ahead and remove all the wrapping from the machine and I did go ahead and read the instruction manual. And I'd like to point out two things. There's a page with all of the warnings about operating the machine and you really should read all of those before you use this machine. And then on this page here where it says using the Big Shot Switch Plus it gives a lot of really useful information about operating the machine. The power is in two parts. You have the power supply and then you have the plug. So you want to take this end of the plug here and that's going to get plugged into the power supply. And then this little plug here goes into the back of the machine. you can see that it's right here. And then of course you'll go ahead and plug this end into your wall outlet. This is the back of the machine and there's this little door here. It's going to open automatically as your platforms move through the machine. Then I want to also point out that there are these recessed handles on each side of the machine. So if you need to move it, you'll use those handles to pick the machine up. Then in the front of the machine, you have this door that opens up here. This is where you will put your platform for feeding your materials through the machine. And then there's a little compartment here where you can store some tools. Inside the machine, there's a sensor. So when you start to push your platform through, the sensor is going to activate and the rollers will start turning. And this surface right here is nine inches wide. 
This button right here is your power button and the one below it is your reverse button. To turn on the machine you'll just hold down the power button until you see it illuminate and then you'll let go and your machine is now on. When you want to reverse your platform you're just going to press and release. You don't have to hold the button down for it to go in reverse. Of course you'll want to make sure that you have enough room both in front of the machine and behind the machine so that your platforms don't go falling off the edge of a table. The platforms are a really great size because they measure 9 inches wide by 12 inches high. So you can very comfortably fit an 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock on top of it. I also have my Big Shot here, which is one that I purchased about 10 years ago. And I'm putting it here just so that you can see size comparison. And with the switch closed, it's approximately 15 inches long by about 7 inches deep. What's really nice about the platforms that come with the unit is that it tells you what each platform is used for. So let's just look at the base platform as an example. You'll see that there are basically three different sections on this platform. This section right here is for textured impressions, texture fades, impresslets, and art textured impressions. And then it gives you a little picture tutorial on how to layer your sandwich. So if you want to do a textured fades folder, you would use this platform with one of the clear cutting pads, then your folder with your cardstock in there, and then another clear cutting pad, and then you would go ahead and put it into the machine. This section here is for embossing with inlets, but you would need to have the emboss and transfer set, which is sold separately to do that. And again, it tells you how to layer everything. And then on this section here, it tells you that it's for the 3D textured impressions, 3D textured fades, etc. And then, of course, it gives you the picture of how you need to layer everything. So you would need the base plate, your folder with the cardstock, and one clear cutting pad on top. So let's go ahead and try one of those. So first I'll take one of the plates and just place it down there. And I'm going to be using one of the texture fade folders from Tim Holtz, which I have right here. I'm going to be using the Distress White Heavy Stock which is 130 pounds. So I'll just put that in the folder. And then I'll cover that with another one of the cutting pads. And now we can go ahead and run it through the machine. Once you're ready to send everything through the machine, you want to make sure that it's going in there straight. You don't want it to get stuck at an angle. And then the rollers will catch, and then you can let go. So let's take a look at how it did. There you go. It did a very nice job. So now let's try one of the 3D texture fade folders. So it tells me that I need my base plate right here, and then I'll be putting the folder directly on top of that. So I'm going to be using this folder right here. And for my cardstock, I'm going to be using the craft cardstock from Ideology. We do need to spray that with a little bit of water. So we've done that. And now I'll stick it right inside the folder. And then we just put one clear cutting pad on top of this. And now we can put it through the machine. I'm ready to send this through. Now one thing you want to make note of is if your platform is too thick, if your sandwich is too thick, the machine will reject it. It does have an overload protection. So I'm going to start pushing this through and for the texture fades, for the 3D texture fades, we do want to run it through at least two times. So you want to hit your reverse button before the platform is done going through the machine. So now we'll hit reverse.
now let's see how it did. There you go. It's got some very nice detail in there. I have to say, this did a much better job than my regular Big Shot. Now I want to do a 3D impresslet, so we need this section here. We'll start out with the base. I have my impresslet folder here, and again, I'm just using the Distress White Heavy Cardstock. So we just need this and one of the cutting pads. Now I'm ready to send it on through and I am going to hit the reverse for this one as well. Okay, let's see how we did. Turned out very nicely. Now I want to try doing some embossing with the thinlets. So you need the base plate and you need your clear plate. And then you need some thinlets. So I'm going to use this set here. I thought this would be cute with the snowflakes. And I'm just going to arrange them face up. And then I'm once again going to use the Distress Heavy Cardstock, so I'll put that on top of those snowflakes. And then you also need to have this set here, which is the Emboss and Transfer set, and it tells you right down here that you need that set and it's sold separately. So, I have the cardstock, now I need to put the little embossing pad on top of that, which I have right here and then you need to put this white plate on top of it. And that's all you need. And then we can go ahead and just send this through the machine. So now I'll just go ahead and send that through. And let's see how we did. Okay, and there you go. You can see it here from both sides. Now I want to cut out some thinlets. I'm not going to be doing framelits, but I do want to say that there's a difference in how you do your sandwich if you're doing a framelit or a thinlet. For a framelit, you're going to put your cardstock down first, and then you'll put your die on top of the cardstock with the cutting side down. For a thinlet, you're going to put down your die first with the cutting side up and then you'll put your cardstock on top of the framelit. So I will be using this die here and I'm going to be using Distress Watercolor Cardstock. So you need to use your base plate plus this plate A and then you'll put down your cutting pad and I have all my pieces on here already with the cutting side up and then I'm going to put the Distress Watercolor Cardstock down and I want to have the rough side of the paper down and then I'll put the other cutting plate on top and now we can run it through the machine. All the crackling that you hear is normal. And now let's see how we did. Looks like it cut out all of the pieces very nicely. So that's one of the finer pieces. And here's the coffee cup. And here I just want to give you a better view of how everything cut out. I want to show you that I did try to cut out this snowman with the Thinlet sandwich. And I used 80 pound cardstock, 
Most of the pieces cut out really well, but you can see that it had trouble on the fringe. It did not cut through the fringe, even though I put the machine through reverse. So I want to try it again because I think that it actually needs the precision plate. So I have a precision plate here. It's quite old and it's from Stampin' Up, but we'll see if it works. So what you need to have for this sandwich is the base plate plus plate A. Then you're going to put the precision plate on top of that. I have my 80 pound cardstock here. And I'm only going to try cutting out the pieces that had some difficulty. You want to put those face down onto the cardstock. Actually, the brooms cut out well, but I want to give it another try anyway. And then you're just going to go ahead and put one of the cutting plates on top of that. And now we're ready to run it through the machine. I'm all ready to go and I am going to do the reverse cut just to make sure. Okay, let's see how we did this time. Here is a close-up of the cut that I just made, and you can see that it still had trouble cutting through the scarf. But I'm going to say that it's probably a reflection of the precision plate that I'm using here. It's quite old, and it's been used quite a lot. So I probably just need to get a new plate. So I'll just go ahead and purchase a new plate at some point and give it another try. Now you can run a big die through this machine, which is great. And if you look on your platforms here, you're going to see that there are no instructions for running a big die. And that's because it does not use those platforms for cutting. So what you want to do is go and get out your instructions and it will give you the information in here about how to set up your sandwich. So you want to look at this section which talks about using the originals or Biggs dies. And what you need is your cutting plate, the die with the foam face up, and then you're going to put your material on top of that and then another cutting plate. And you can use your existing cutting plates here. So I actually just purchased a new set of cutting plates from my regular Big Shot. So you want to put that there. And here's my Bigs die. It's an oldie but a goodie. And on top of that I'm going to put some chipboard, which is very thick. And then I'm going to put the last cutting plate on top. And now we can run it through the machine. Now if this is too thick for the machine, it will be rejected. And the Bigs are steel rule dies, so it should cut through that chipboard with no problem. Okay, let's see how we did. Actually, looks like it did really, really well. So I'm actually very happy about that because I do like to use a lot of chipboard with my Biggs dies. So I just need to poke these other little pieces out and they'll come right out. And it actually did just fine. And here's a closer look at that chipboard piece. It's actually quite thick. And it cut through beautifully. And just for fun, I want to run that picture wheel through one more time using some metallic craft card stock. I already have the sandwich ready. You'll prepare it exactly the same way that we did before. So there you go. Did a great job. So here it is. 
I'm just going to layer it on that piece of chipboard. But I actually want to try putting it through an embossing folder first. And here it is after going through the embossing folder on the chipboard with some ink on top of there, it's going to look great. Now lastly, I want to cut out some sizzlets. You're going to need the instructions for your sandwich. So you need your base plate, a cutting pad, the sizzlets with the cutting side face up, your cardstock on top, and then another cutting plate. So I'll put my first plate down. I'm going to use this one here, which is probably too long, but what I'm going to do is just place it here on a diagonal. And we'll see how that does. And then I'm just going to use a piece of 80 pound cardstock. So I'll put that on there like that. It's definitely not going to cover, but it's okay. I just want to see if it will cut. And then a cutting plate on top. And once again, let's just see how we did here. Now this didn't cut through all the way, but that's because of it was really too large for the mat. But where it did cut, it actually did a great job. Here's a close-up, and it actually even did a great job on the preparations and the tickets. Well, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how the machine works. I think overall it did a very nice job. I purposely did not use the dies in the embossing folder that came with the machine because I wanted to see how it was going to work with my dies and folders. Well, I do hope that you enjoyed watching my video. I am primarily a sewing channel, but I do enjoy mixed media art. I do have many sewing tutorials on my YouTube channel, and many of them have free patterns. I hope that you'll go check them out, and please like and subscribe.